Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Innal hamdalillah nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nastaghfiruh wa na'udzubillahi min shururi anfusina wa min sayyiati a'malina. Man yahdihillahu fala mudilla lahu wa man yudlil fala hadiya lahu. Asyhadu an la ilaha illallah wahdahu la syarika lahu. Wa asyhadu anna Muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluhu. Usikum wa iyaya awalan bittaqullah faqad fazal muttaqun Dear brother and sister in Islam, alhamdulillah With the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala We are able to be alive again today And we hope that whatever life that Allah has given us Use of it to serve Him It is important for us as parents We are talking about parents Because parent is the one who is going to bring up the children and the upbringing of children depend on the righteous parent we all want to be good we want to have a good life we want to be a good father we want to be a good leader inshallah we want to have good children when we have children we do not just want to have any children but you want to have righteous children now this is very important in our life because if we don't have righteous children, we are going to suffer. The children will make us suffer. Now, to make sure that inshallah, we have righteous children, good children, good offspring, the first important thing that Islam reminds us to do is make sure that you choose the right partner in your life. That's rule number one. And that's why in the Quran, brothers and sisters, Allah remind us that a believing man should not marry except to the believing woman. The same go to the woman. A believing woman should only marry a believing man. To make it simple, good people always look for the good partner. Now, good partner is not because of her beauty, because of her wealth, because of her lineage, but the most important thing because she have a beautiful akhlaq, conduct, with the right iman. The same go to the other party. A good man is not because of his wealth, because of his look, because of his lineage, but because of his moral conduct. He's a man of good akhlaq. And of course, who have the right akida. Sometimes you have men who are very good in their conduct, but they don't have a good aqidah. They don't even worship Allah. But as a person, he's a good guy. He don't lie, he don't drink, he don't womanize, he don't gamble, he don't smoke. He's a very nice guy. But he don't have iman. Now, being a Muslimah, a mu'mina, a salihah, we must be very careful. Life is not just, I love you, you love me. But it is... Something that we are going to live together, be together, until we die. Inshallah. But in the meantime, we must make the right choice. Now, when you make the right choice, brother and sister, even Alhamdulillah, we have made the right choice. Islam guide us. After we got married, what should we do? We know what we should do after we get married. Islamically, but majority of the ummah today are not aware about the sunnah of marriage. While marrying, while we are getting married, and also after the nikah. So we have to learn. We have to know what is a sunnah. All of us are exposed to a tradition or culture, but not our sunnah. Now it is better for all of us who are Muslim parents before we want to make any arrangement or any marriage arrangement, go and get some advice from scholars of knowledge. Go and get advice from people who understand the sunnah, not the people who love bid'ah. If you ask the people bid'ah, they will corrupt your whole walima. They will corrupt the whole event with all the muharramat coming in. How can you be blessed by Allah? By having an Islamic nikah with all the haram 
activities and program. Now, I would like to remind all parents today, before you want to do anything to your children, please be humble, ask people of knowledge, people who fear Allah, people who love the Sunnah of Prophet Muhammad Because by doing what the Prophet wants us to do, we will gain the love from Allah, and we may have some shortcoming while doing all these good things, and may Allah forgive us for our shortcoming. Now, we need guidance. You know, when we want to pray, we need to learn how to pray. When we want to fast also, we need to learn how to fast. When we want to perform Hajj and so on, we also have to learn, have the right knowledge. We must be humble to ask. Now, a lot of scholars today pray and hope that parents will be humble enough to approach them and ask them for guidance. How should I conduct my walima? How should the nikah ceremony be organized Islamically? This is important, but hardly people refer to scholar of knowledge or student of knowledge to seek their advice Islamic. We thought that we know everything. And each time when you attend a nikah ceremony, you'll find that you've been very, very sad and upset because the only thing that they follow the sunnah is the nikah, the akad. After that, all the bid'ah, some shirik, and also all the muharramat is coming in. Now, how can we you know, get the blessing if we are the beginning of our children's married life, they are exposed to all the haram things? Be simple, brothers and sisters, because Allah loves simplicity. In Allah yuhibbu, Bazaza, you know, Allah loves people who are simple. Even when we have the mean, alhamdulillah, when we have the mean, when we have all the wealth with us, and we want to organize a big marriage ceremony, no problem. As long as you make sure that you don't forget the poor, the needy, you also invite them together, yeah, so that they also participate in the walima and. In the same time, you can prepare the best food, the best drink, and prepare the best gift to all your guests. There's nothing wrong. But stay away from all the un-Islamic program and activities. Today, it's very sad. There is so-called a group of people who commercialize the whole marriage ceremony. They are coming to you and say that we are the marriage planner. Don't worry. Give us all your photos from the day you were born. Even if it's a black and white photos, it's better. And we are going to come up with a special kind of performance, presentation, expose all of you to the public, to everybody who attend the nikah ceremony, the walima. And now they are going to show what you do when you're small, even sometimes you expose your aura, and sometimes there are times that you just got to know each other. When we do a lot of haram activities, courting, we know that courting is not allowed in Islam without a mahram. But this is very normal to our children's lifestyle today. They show it to the public that you are so proud, as though as you are happy committing the sin. We know that all these things is wrong. And we have been doing it because of the weakness of our Iman. So we should conceal it. Don't expose it anymore. The past is the past. We have to start a new life. Now we are going to get married and make it halal. So whatever relationship before this that is haram, you should not be proud of it and show it to the public. So be careful. Even all the photographer who will come for the marriage ceremony, you must control them. Always don't let these people control you. You know, sometimes they want you to kiss each other in front of the public. How can you do that? Kissing, I mean, this is your wife, this is your husband. There's nothing wrong for you to love each other, but you don't do it openly. And someday, oh, one more time, one more time, one more shot. Na'uzubillah. You must have control, brothers and sisters. Have shyness, al-hayyam al-iman. 
because shyness is part of iman. You see what's happening to us? Our parents you know, forget all the good things about the do and don't. And the children, of course, those who are going to be a bride and a groom, of course, they wouldn't be able to control a lot of what is going to happen because everything is being organized by parents. We parent. Now, if you want righteous children, you must know what is right and what is wrong to do when you want them to get married because you want Allah's blessing. And after that, we also hope that our children are being informed, being guided to ask Allah for protection and also to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that now they are both legally husband and wife. Now, after doing that, there's nothing for us to be ashamed as a father or a mother to remind our children what they should do when they want to get close to each other and also what to say. Inshallah, after the short break, we will see you again. Scientific notions in the glorious Quran are among its endless aspects that can testify for the divine nature of this noble book. These scientific notions are probably the best addressed to the people of our time. I am Zaghloul al -Najjar. Please join me in this program to discuss some aspects of the scientific notions in the glorious Quran. Appreciate the word-to-word -word authenticity of scientific notions and proven facts mentioned in the glorious Quran 1400 years ago in Scientific Notions in the Glorious Quran. Tonight at 8 p.m. and repeat telecast at 8.30 a.m. India on Peace TV. Marriage or divorce? What's Islamic ruling? Nikah. Solution or problem? Heaven or hell? Uh, there is a misconception. You choose. Beauty, wealth, family status, virtue. Decide what you want. Decide your choice. Be sad or be happy. It's your choice. Join Dr. Zakir Naik in Better Half or Bitter Half every Friday at 6.30 p.m. and repeat telecast at 9.30 p.m. India on Peace TV. Alhamdulillah, brothers and sisters. Now, this is just a reminder. Maybe we have been doing it, alhamdulillah, for those who are not exposed to this teaching. We are here to remind every one of us. Now, sometimes, being parents, we thought that, oh, the children should know. No, children know a lot of things today, but sometimes about the sunnah, they are not exposed to it, just like how we ourselves are not exposed to the Sunnah. We know about the tradition and that culture, but the Sunnah, we don't pay a lot of attention to it. So it's time for us to make them love Allah and love Prophet Muhammad wasallam. There's nothing to be ashamed to tell them. When you want to be together at night, make sure that you seek Allah's protection from the whisper of the Satan. And also may Allah protect their offspring 
from the whisper of the Satan. What we want is we want our children to have righteous offspring so that we have righteous grandchildren. That's what we always hope for. Remember the history of the family of Imran, the wife of Imran. When Allah wanted to give them a child, they always plan that may Allah give them a baby boy so that the baby boy will be able to serve Allah. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala do answer their prayer. And one of the prayer of the family of Imran to Allah, when the wife of Imran conceived, got pregnant, she said to Allah, O oh Allah, make what is inside my womb a child muharrara, muharrara. Look at the niyat, the intention of the wife, the parent. They do not just want to have any child. And they pray, may Allah give them a child that, inshallah, they want this child to serve Allah, to be free from dunya, and be the servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not like us today, when we want to have any children, we always want beautiful daughter or handsome son, maybe look like this star, that star. We forget to ask Allah to give us righteous children. We don't even have the intention to say, Inshallah, I want my child to be mukhlisin, mu'minin. No, we just want to have baby. That's what we want. That's why Allah gave us just a baby. What we have to do, brother and sister, from the beginning, we should be humble enough to ask Allah and make sure that our intention that when Allah gave us any children, the upbringing of the children is to make them strong Muslim children, a mu'minin or mu'minat, a salihin or salihat, a qanitin or qanitat, all the good things that Allah wants us to have. That's what we must plan for our children. Of course, all of us have their own idea. Inshallah, I'm proud if my children in the future become a doctor, maybe an educator, maybe a motivator, maybe become an engineer. So many dreams we have for our future children. But how many of us really ask Allah to make our children righteous children? Zuriyatan saliha. Very little. Maybe we just forget about all this good thing. Because we do not ask Allah, that's why we have to struggle. That's why a lot of parents are suffering today. So brother and sister, we hope we understand the important to make sure that we guide our children and we also teach them to make the right choice and teach them the dua. And when you teach them the dua, inshallah, if they apply it and they have the niyat from day one that if Allah will grant them with an offspring, the upbringing of the offspring is to serve Allah. Now to serve Allah, it now means that you just want them to memorize the Quran, be a qari, be a, you know, a person who are very devoted to Allah and forget their responsibility towards others. No. You want them to be a doctor? Alhamdulillah. Be a doctor with Iman. You want them to be an engineer? No problem. But an engineer who have Iman, not a doctor or an engineer who kufur, who disobey Allah, who deny Allah, who is proud, not that kind of doctor. So that inshallah, our children, with the knowledge that Allah give them, they are going to make use of this knowledge to serve the people for the sake of Allah. They become the humble doctor, a doctor that is always there to serve the public who need his help. Not only thinking of dollar and cent, he can be an engineer, he can be anyone, can be a leader, but a leader who loves the people who are ready to serve that's what we want, brother and sister. Because if you have this kind of children, Allahu Akbar, 
MashaAllah, this is the best gift that Allah has given us. But you must ask for it. And a lot of us ask for righteous children. But how about ourselves? Are we righteous enough? So we must set a good example for them. If you want our children to learn Quran, we must also know how to recite the Quran. If you want the children to always remember Allah, every morning, every evening, while standing, while sitting, while sleeping, wherever they are, we also as parents must remember all the askar of us. Now you see a lot of children, mashallah, we send our children to good Islamic school, kindergarten, and they pick up a lot of askar of the Prophet recitation, the prayer. But sometimes when they come home and ask the parent, Daddy, Mommy, Baba, Mother, no, uh, I forget. The teacher remind me to make a dua when going into the washroom and coming out from the washroom. But not, I've forgotten. So can you remind me? We are blurred. We are tongue-tied because we don't even memorize this dua. So if you want the children to always remember Allah, Zakirin wa Zakirat, we also must remember Allah. We must set an example. By doing that, inshallah, you can see that Allah is going to bless our children. And our children, inshallah, will pass down this knowledge, the beautiful knowledge, to their children, our grandchildren. Can you imagine, brother and sister, when you have righteous children, righteous grandchildren, or great, great grandchildren, Allah Akbar. Qurratul A'yun. That's why we ask Allah to give our children that when our eye look at them, it gives us the coolness of the eye, the peace yeah, in our heart. When we look at them, mashallah, you just love to look at them. You just love their presence. Because each time when you see them, they make you so happy and so peaceful. This is what we want. We hope that Allah will grant it to us by we starting to be careful from day one. We should guide our children now. Now there are a lot of guidance that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has shown us through the early prophets, through the early pious people, and also the best one through Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. Because the Prophet, he got married, he's the best husband, all of us are aware of that. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he have children. And look at the upbringing of the children, the Prophet is known in history. One of the most pious lady also is Fatima radiallahu anha. Fatima, all of us know who is Fatima. And see, because of Fatima, the Prophet measured with Ali, one of the righteous person, and see what happened? The Zuriyat is Hassan and Hussein. The Prophet's grandchildren is Hassan and Hussein. And later on, from this family lineage, we have a lot of good people, good Zuriyat. Now, this is what I'm trying to share with all the parents today. I know we love our children, especially our grandchildren. But please, don't spoil them. Most of the time, grandparents spoil their grandchildren because in the beginning of our life, we don't give a lot to our children because we are also struggling. We just got married, you know, everything is so new to us, and we don't have the means. We work very hard together as husband and wife. And now Allah gave us children, now we have more responsibility. So we work harder and harder to make sure that we give the best to our children. Until, alhamdulillah, one day when we are stable, economically, financially, everything, we are strong. Now our children have grown up. After we are stable, they have grown up. So we start to build a big house hoping that the children will always stay with us even after they got married. After they got married, we hope they'll stay with us. But life has to go on. Children may have their own value, 
after getting married, they want to be by themselves. They want to have their privacy. Now we are home alone again. We are back to husband and wife. Even we have a lot of children after some time. Children like to be by themselves. That's what happened in life. May Allah accept all our effort, inshallah, and may Allah help us so that we can help ourselves and help our children and also our future grandchildren. Amin. Ya Rabbil Alamin. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.